Ice forms from the buildup of snow. If accumulation is greater than ablation, layers form. This is called neve and has a granular structure containing trapped air. Pressure gradually squeezes air out of the layers forming ice. It can take between 30 and 1000 years for glacier ice to form. True glacier ice is not found until a depth of about 100 metres and is a bluish colour. 2 million to 11 and a half thousand years ago, for example, ice covered about 30% of the land in the world. Today it covers about 10%. In Britain, ice covered land as far as the Bristol Channel, in Europe as far south, in, as, far south as Berlin, and in North America as far south as New York. During the last ice age, the temperature remained below zero degrees, which allowed the ice to remain on the land all year. This last ice age occurred during the Pleistocene period. A glacier is a mass of ice that moves downhill very slowly. The formation of glaciers and the way they shape the landscape is called glaciation. They are found at high altitude across the globe, even on high mountains close to the equator and at lower altitudes in high latitudes such as the North and South Poles. Over a long period of time, glaciers advance or retreat, depending on the amount of snow, accumulation or ablation that occurs. Even as a glacier is retreating, however, it is still moving downhill due to gravity. Accumulation is defined as when snow and ice gather in the glacier during the winter, allowing the glacier to grow. Ablation is defined as the removal of snow and ice from a glacier by melting or evaporation during the summer, causing the glacier to shrink. The difference between accumulation and ablation is the glacial budget. Ice is a powerful force in shaping the land as a result of weathering, erosion, transportation and deposition. One way of erosion is freeze-thaw weathering. Freeze-thaw describes the action of glacial meltwater on joints, cracks and hollows in the rock. When the temperature reaches freezing point, the water inside the crack freezes, expands and causes the crack to widen. When the temperatures rise, the water thaws and contracts. This eventually causes rocks to break up. For freeze-thaw to take effect, the air temperature needs to fluctuate around freezing point. Erosion, abrasion and plucking. Movement along the underside of a glacier is slower than the movement at the top due to the friction created as it slides along the ground surface. Plucking occurs when cracked and broken rocks and stones become frozen to the base or sides of the glacier and are plucked from the ground or rock face as the glacier moves downhill. It leaves behind a jagged landscape. Glaciers also erode by abrasion, which is when the rocks and stones embedded in the glacier rub like sandpaper against the bedrock. It leaves behind smooth, polished surfaces which may have scratches in them called sturations. Sturations are carved out by angular debris embedded in the base of the glacier. Ice also transports material through rotational slip and bulldozing. Rotational slip is when the glacier moves down and out of the quarry. It occurs when gravity pulls the ice away from the back wall of the quarry. Bulldozing is when the glacier pushes rocks and rubble in front of it as it moves down the valley. Deposition. Glaciers will always reach a point when they start to melt, mainly due to the rise in temperature as they descend down the valley. As the ice melts, it cannot carry as much material and therefore deposits it. These deposits are called moraines. Distinct landforms can occur as a result of erosion. One of these is a corrie. Corries form when snowflakes collect in a hollow and compress, becoming glacier ice. Erosion and weathering gradually make the hollow bigger. These are often the starting point of a glacier. Arets can also form. These are knife edge ridges. It is formed when two neighbouring corries run back to back. As the glacier erodes e either side of the ridge, the edge becomes steeper and the ridge becomes narrower, e.g. striding edge in the lake district. Pyramidal peaks can also form. These are formed when three or more corries and arets meet. The glaciers have carved away at the top of a mountain, creating a sharply pointed summit, e.g. Matterhorn. Truncated spurs can also form. These form when a river erodes the landscape. Ridges of land form in its upper course which jut into the river. These are called interlocking spurs. A glacier cuts through these ridges, eroding them away, forming truncated spurs. Drumlins can also form by deposition. These are elongated hills of glacial deposits. They can be one kilometre long and 500 metres wide, 
often occurring in groups. A melting glacier is overloaded with moraine, rocks and boulders. A glacier meets a small obstacle which causes material to be deposited. Boulder clay is deposited behind the obstacle and forms the blunt end, stoss end, of the drumlin. The moving ice moulds the boulder clay into shape around the obstacle forming a tapered end or lee slope. There are also moraines, lateral, medial, ground and terminal. When glacial ice melts, rocks are deposited that have been previously been carried along by the glacier. Piles of these deposits are called moraines. Lateral moraines are deposited along the sides of the glacier. Terminal moraines are found at the furthest point it reaches. As a result of human activity, avalanches can form. Avalanches are a rapid flow of snow down a slope due to gravity. They are a specific hazard that can threaten mountain settlements and tourist resorts. There are two types of avalanche. There are slab avalanches and point release avalanches. Slab avalanches occur over a wide area and large sections of the snowbank will fall down the mountain. Point release avalanches start from a single point and they mainly can comprise of loose snow that falls down. Avalanches form when there are weak bonds between the layers of snow. Causes of avalanches include heavy snowfall, rapid change in temperature, as in a very sudden change, slopes between 30 to 45 degrees, skiers, earthquakes, strong winds, and the type of slope, as convex slopes are more likely to cause an avalanche than concave slopes.